So here is a render of the printer and let's go to Fusion 360. So you can access this model as well. This is on A360, so you can download the whole printer if you want to do modifications or whatever, it's all open source. The link to the model is on GitHub and also should be on the wiki. We have the Wii King from before and now the Wii Baby will also be there. So what you see on the screen now is the top of the base frame. This is the base frame, all assembled all together. So, and we already assembled the lower square in part one of the series. First of all, I want to go through all the printed parts here because they are all assemblies as well. So let's have a look at the motor brackets. Here you can see the motor bracket. This is the motor bracket in exploded view. And these are the parts you need for this build. So we have some M5s by 10 and some washers and some T-nuts. The stepper motor, the pulley, the printed bracket, and that's it for this one. If you go to the documents folder on GitHub, there will be drawings for these parts. If you take a look at the idler bracket, so here is the idler bracket. And again, we have M5s by 10 and washers and T-nuts. The T-nuts must be assembled into the extrusions before you start because they slide in from the side. You can use drop-in T-nuts. I prefer these T-nuts. If you do forget to slide one of these in, then you use drop-ins, of course. If you don't do buy the mechanical kit from Maker Supplies, you will get these T-nuts, but also additional drop-in T-nuts. And the printed part here is, of course, the bracket, the orange bracket, or the brown metallic bracket, and these black spacers. Those are important to keep the idlers in the spot they are supposed to be. And these are the mellow idlers, or the gates idlers. They are both the same size, and this bracket only fits the mellow and gates idlers. If you do want to use cheap uh, idlers, they have a lower profile, then you need to do some tweaks um, as to the spacers and so on to get them in the correct uh, place. But I don't recommend using them because the bearings just doesn't work. Yeah, gates idlers it is. On the underside here, we have slots for nuts and for bolts. So one of the bolts I placed upside down and the other one right side up. That does not really matter. You can place them in whichever way you like. Also important for this build is these shims. They are M5 by 8 millimeter outer diameter. They should not be a normal washer. They should be precision shims. You use those on top and under the idlers. All of the idlers need precision shims as well as the wheels. Let's also have a look at this top C idler bracket. The top rear idler body as I call it. It's very basic. Again M5 by 10 washers and T-nuts. And uh, these T-nuts again need to be slided into the extrusion. And again mellow or gates idlers and precision shims and this M5 bolt here. This is M5 by 30 and we use lock nuts to keep everything in place. Do not tighten this to give any pressure on the printed part. This should just be touching. Everything should be touching. There should be no tension here when you apply this nut. So basically you should be able to move the washer slightly when everything is assembled. We don't want pressure on the idler. Then we can have a look at this front anchor point for the C-lift. This is for the belt, for tensioning the belt. So we have a tension system here. So here you can see the parts. So we have one idler here and then we have a printed spacer here. And uh, the belt actually goes up on this side and around and down here and then under this spacer and then up to this part. So this part is uh, our tensioner. So you run the belt up into this around and then it clamps on itself. And then we have this guy, which we use as a tension screw. 
and then again m5 by 10 washers and t nuts and this guy is m4 by 20 and then a, a lock nut for that and a washer also this is m4 by 30 and a lock nut and washer we have one m5 by 30 here a lock nut and washer again you can have a look at drawings of these parts on github as we go along the last part for this step is the corner loom body it's a corner bracket but it also acts like a loom attachment point so this guy is for cable management so the point with this is to have the corner bracket and it's two parts so i just have one attachment screw here by m3 by 12 and uh, then a nut and then i have here m3 by 12 i use this screw to hold the wires and the loom better in place and i actually screw this inside the ptfe tube tube it's just a normal ptfe tube you use for a bowden system so when you have all the printed parts you know ready you can assemble the motor later but it's easier to add motors and pulleys and idlers and all this stuff before you actually add the brackets to the frame so let's now start adding to the frame i actually also uploaded to github one animation on how to do this so if you go to github you go to document library you go to drawings and then we have an avi file here so this is how everything adds together one y extrusion then the corner brackets same on the other side this is all y extrusions they are 350 and then the x extrusion and of course the rear idler and then the front i forgot to talk about one of the parts which is this guy and that's the y end stop i can talk about that later so let's just assemble and also i have not talked about you know the corner angle brackets which you need also t nuts for so make sure you have all those in place before you start assembly what you start with is normally you start with the y extrusions they are all tapped they should be tapped in the ends because we have this screw going into the end this is important to align everything and then you add this guy and same over here you add the either bracket to this extrusion also you can add the corner brackets these two same over here these two and again use the end tapping for this guy and then this on the side then you just repeat that process on the other y extrusion and if you do want to use my cable loom body then you change one of these guys with this one in the corner for cable management for the x extrusions you want to add this guy before you attach this one to these guys and then also remember these ones and t nuts for those so on the motor side we have the x extrusion and we have this belt tensioner with also the screws and the t-nuts must be inside i recommend you have a look at the 3d model when you do these steps so let's have a look at the end stop for the y you know a t-nut this is another type of t-nut it doesn't really matter you can use a drop in for this one so we have the optical end stop on the bracket just like this with m3s and nuts to keep everything in place and you just add that to this side same side as what i call the a motor here you can see the drawing for this step you can see a part list what number of fasteners you need and so on on the left here if you do miss anything you know i might have overlooked something please let me know in the comments below and also what you think of the presentation if i should change something am i talking too slow or too fast or unclear whatever let me know guys it really helps me improve i want to make this as good as possible as easy as possible for everyone to build
So that's gonna do it for this step. In, a, in the next one, it's gonna be just a short one to finalize the base frame. And then we're gonna look at adding the C extrusions. You might actually figure that out yourself. Remember again, T nuts and corner brackets. And you, we have also this guy for the C motor and the worm drive. Also again, T nuts there. If you like this and and of course there's gonna be a lot of more other types of content as well general 3d printing and 3d modeling educational stuff on a tech level please subscribe guys see you in the next one